Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a comparison video. I have been sent all three of the Amethyst fragrances by Lalique by Cassandra from Skin Sense for Fuss Pots. If you haven't checked out her channel, then please do go check her out. And I'd just like to thank Cassandra for sending me these fragrances because I've always wanted to try Amethyst by Lalique and it's interesting to compare the other ones in this line. Also, I know that Amethyst by Lalique is compared widely to Meliora by Parfums de Mali. So I just wanted to make my own comparison and just see how similar or not similar those two fragrances were and whether actually Parfums de Mali Meliora was actually more similar to one of the flanker fragrances. So if you're interested in this kind of content, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And also please like this video if you do end up liking this video. So Meliora, has clearly been very successful and costs 230 pounds for what 75 mil amethyst by lalique costs 21 pounds for 100 mil so i can see the attraction of wanting that fragrance to be a dupe of meliora and actually when i first smelled amethyst by lalique i was immediately reminded of meliora but I hadn't smelt them side by side before. So I'm just going to take you through what Meliora smells like to begin with, and then I'm going to compare it with Amethyst by Lalique, and then I'm going to talk about the flankers of Amethyst by Lalique. So it's important to note in these comparisons that really sniffing up close, you're always going to find differences, and those differences could be very, very minute. So I'm going to try and zoom out a bit and talk about the fragrances from a distance almost to try to see whether they are passingly similar enough to be something that somebody could mistake on you for Meliora or not, as well as that close-up comparison. So Parfums de Mali Meliora has been described by a few people now as a universally likeable fragrance. And I get it, it's fun, it's fruity, it's upbeat, and it's just something that just makes you a little bit smiley. It's just got a kind of happy, upbeat feeling about it. And it's got a rich fruitiness that's just a little bit addictive somehow. So overall, I describe Meliora as a fruity, sweet, soapy, primarily musky, slightly woody fragrance. I'm going to list the notes because on Fragrantica, the notes, I think, are actually wrong. So in the top, you have red berries, raspberry and lemon essence. In the mid, you have rose, ylang ylang and jasmine tea. And in the base notes, you have vanilla, musk and cedarwood. So the fragrance starts off really bright, really zingy and really fruity. And actually it makes me think very much of a raspberry soap in the beginning, like one of those body shop raspberry soaps. It's just got that sort of, you know, deep fruitiness, but with a slight soapiness. So as this fragrance dries down, you get more of a, a black currant feel. And there's also a bit of a light pink rose and you do smell a little bit of the tea actually. As this dries down further, it gets a little bit woodier, but also that soapiness stays, but it does get even more fruity in a way. So it smells to me almost like you're eating a hard candy kind of travel sweet. It could be pretty much any red fruity or dark fruity flavored travel sweet. And it could even be a lemony pineapple kind of flavored travel sweet as well. It smells a little bit tropical even in, in the dry down to me. So I can see why a lot of people enjoy this fragrance because it does have that deep, rich fruitiness and that sweetness that people like in fragrances, but it's not a, a, a childish kind of sweetness. Good longevity on clothing, I'd say, but not quite so good on skin. It's quite a quiet fragrance on my skin and it doesn't seem to last too many hours on my skin either. But I think, you know, spraying on clothes or over spraying, maybe that, that would work. But honestly, for a 230 pound fragrance, you probably don't want to over spray, do you? So how does Parfums de Mali Meliora compare with Lalique's Amethyst, apart from the huge difference in price? So let's move on to Lalique's Amethyst, which was released in 2007 and has the following notes. Again, I think these are wrong on Fragrantica, so I'm just going to read them out. So the top notes are nutmeg, blackberry and blackcurrant. The mid notes are rose, peony, pepper, lily and ylang ylang. And the base notes are bourbon, vanilla and musk. So I'd describe amethyst as a dark purple fruity and green smelling musky fragrance. It makes me think of vines and berries and, and just dark forests really. It just has this sort of greenness to it, but also this, this woodiness and this fruitiness. To me, this fragrance is mostly black currant, um, but it's quite a dry and tart black currant. It's not really a, a super juicy kind of black currant. 
but there's certainly still that greenness there and definitely a, quite a big musk. The musk here is more like a laundry musk to me. It, it's something that, that's sort of quite soapy in a way. There are points in this fragrance where you do smell other notes, you do smell the, the peony, but really it's that muskiness and the berries that really dominate the fragrance throughout. And there's definitely a bit of a green feel that does sort of stick around for most of the fragrance too. So if I was going to make a comparison between the two fragrances, I'd say Meliora is definitely slightly soapier. It's also sweeter and it's brighter and it's fruitier. It's happier. It's more uplifting as a, as a feeling with the fragrance. Amethyst is for sure the greener fragrance. It's, it's definitely more purple feeling and the musk here is quite different. The musk here is, is not quite so refined. It, it's just a little bit more laundry like than in Meliora. But they both do share a soapiness, but it's not quite the same kind of soapiness. But there's definitely a resemblance. I'd say side by side, the fragrances really aren't that similar. And I think actually when you smell them further away, that's when you see the similarity. So I remember when I first tried Amethyst, I was immediately reminded of Meliora. And that's the kind of you know, light bulb moment that means that they are similar in some way, but it's only when you compare them directly that you see that there are quite huge differences. But I think actually smelling these fragrances further away, one could be mistaken for the other very easily by somebody. I mean, I think they are, they do bear a resemblance. I can see why people are comparing these things. And I think really it's the price point, isn't it? If you, if you want a fragrance for £21, then go for, for Amethyst. If you want a fragrance for, for £230, then go for Meliora. It's just up to you. It's up to you with, with how much you're comfortable spending and, and whether you think Meliora is actually worth spending that extra amount of money. I'd say they bear the greatest resemblance after about a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes in when Meliora starts to get a little bit more soapier and a little bit more blackcurrant, then that is probably when they sort of smell the most similar. But I think that similarity just diverges again later on. But yeah, if you're wanting to replicate that mid-stage of Meliora, then Amethyst isn't a bad kind of dupe. It's not close by any means of the imagination, but it, it's not a million miles away. So next I'm going to talk about Lalique Amethyst Exquise, which was a fragrance that was released in 2017 and is a flanker of Amethyst. So this fragrance has notes of blackberry, raspberry, blackcurrant and heliotrope. In the mid it has notes of orchid and Bulgarian rose. And in the base it has notes of vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood and Brazilian gardenia. So how does Exquise smell and how does it compare to Amethyst and Meliora? So Exquise is more intensely floral, it's sweeter, it's more almondy, it's more cherry. It's just a more powdery fragrance as well in comparison to Amethyst. And it's also creamier. It's just not got that tartness that the original has. It doesn't have that zing from, from the blackcurrant. It doesn't have that dryness that the blackcurrant in the original gives it. I think really if you like fragrances like Sea Fury, you might ultimately prefer Exquise as opposed to the original fragrance. I think it's just a, a it's very much along the lines of Sea Fiora. It's creamy, creamy and body cream like. I think weirdly Exquise is touted as the darker and more sensual version of Amethyst. I get that it's slightly more intense. It's a bit stronger, um, but I don't think it's darker. I, to me, it sort of smells more pink, pink and milky in a way. So with this one, you get more raspberry than in the original, and you also get that sort of cherry almond feel of the heliotrope, but also a creamy milkiness. And really the dark berries are, are really not that dark in this one. This one definitely feels more pink. This lacks that soapiness and the, the heavy musk of the original, and it's also just not green in the slightest. It's definitely a more friendly one, this one. This one smells milkier, sweeter and creamier. It's almost like a berry yoghurt with a slight floral touch to it. It's a really delicious smelling fragrance. And actually on me, this one projected and lasted a lot longer on my skin than the original fragrance and a lot longer than Meliora did. I'd say out of all of the Amethyst line, I think I preferred Excuse the most. 
but I don't think it's as original as uh, Amethyst. I don't think it's as groundbreaking. I think, you know, you can you could compare Excuse to a few different things. And I also don't think it's as similar to Meliora as the original fragrance Amethyst. I, th I just don't think they really compare at all. I think maybe they get a little bit more similar as Excuse dries down. But I still think even in the air as a passing kind of thing, I don't think you would mistake Amethyst Excuse for, for Meliora. It's, it's just not a comparison to be made. So the final fragrance is Amethyst Le Clas, which was actually released in 2014. And this fragrance to me is the lighter version, which you would expect from the name. So Amethyst Le Clas has notes of blackcurrant, raspberry and nashi pears, peony rose magnolia in the mid, and in the base it has dog violet, blackberry and musks. So to me, this fragrance opens with something that's slightly lemony, um, really soft, gentle lemon, and even a little bit minty. And I don't know whether that's the pear, the nashi pear, because I've not smelt that note before, or whether they've just missed lemon off the notes listing. I was really shocked when I looked at the notes and didn't see lemon listed, actually. So who knows? But that's what I smell. I smell lemon and something very lightly minty. There's also quite a pepperiness and powder into this fragrance. And really, the peony is a very strong part of this fragrance for most of its lifetime. You can smell the raspberry, but it's very soft and it's really quite background. It's not something that really stands out. It's not a zingy kind of raspberry. It's not a bright raspberry. It's more of a soft, muted raspberry with a skin still on. When that weird minty lemoniness at the beginning of the, of the fragrance is gone, it goes a little bit aquatic. It smells quite watery, but there is still quite a soapiness and there is a little hint of those darker fruits that were the core of the fragrance in Amethyst. So this one again doesn't have that greenness that's in the original, it doesn't have that woodiness that's in the original either, but it still does have a slight soapiness and the musk is really quite different. The musk here is quite soft and it's more like a white musk, it's quite clean, whereas the other one was more laundry musk, it was, it was kind of harsher and, and denser. I think Le Clat is a fragrance that makes me think that I've smelt it before. I can't actually think which fragrance it's reminding me of. But this one really did sort of, you know, ring a bell in my mind that I have smelt something very, very similar to this. And really, I think it's the same story as Excuse. It's kind of not as original or, or groundbreaking as the original Pillar fragrance was. Le Clat as well didn't really hang around on my skin for very long. It probably was about the same amount of time as the original Pillar fragrance or maybe a little bit less. And I would say this one projected less and was just generally less strong. So in comparison to Meliora, I'd say that Le Clat really doesn't smell very much at all like Meliora again, much like Excuse, but in a different way. In the air, Le Clat smells lighter and less soapy than Meliora. And close up, Le Clat doesn't smell at all like Meliora because the black currant is really not that present at all in that fragrance. And also the musk is just not strong enough. So I think my own conclusion is that Amethyst does smell a little bit like Meliora, but not that similar. And it's one that you would maybe have a passing resemblance to in the air rather than something where you were smelling it directly on someone's skin. I also think that the flanker fragrances of Amethyst do not really resemble Meliora as much as the original Pillar fragrance. From a personal point of view, I don't love Meliora to the degree that I would spend £230 on a 75ml bottle of it. However, I probably would buy a £21 bottle of Amethyst had I not already got Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme, which is a fragrance that has elements that remind me a little bit of Amethyst, but definitely not of Meliora. Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme is just a much darker fragrance. It's a much woodier fragrance than Amethyst is but they still do have a little bit of similarity to the extent that I wouldn't want to have both in my collection right now. I just don't wear that type of fragrance enough, really. So finally, out of the Amethyst line, which one did I like the best? Well, I think out of the three, Amethyst was probably the one that was the most original. It was the one that made me think, hmm, this is really quite different. I think Exquise just smelt like a lot of other kind of body creamy, powdery heliotropy fragrances and I really like heliotrope so I've probably smelt maybe more fragrances with heliotrope in than maybe other types of fragrance and that's maybe why I think that I've smelt that kind of fragrance before but I did really like the excuse 
flanker. And I think I ultimately preferred it, even though I don't need it, to um, Amethyst. I think the Leclerc was probably my least favourite of the three. And I think that's maybe just because it's quite watery feeling and it just feels quite light and like something that's not really going to stick around. But I, I guess it's like your own personal preference, isn't it? You Something like that might really appeal to you. And I'm not saying it's a bad fragrance at all. I'm just saying it's probably just not the one for me out of the three. So what do you think? Have you tried Meliora? Have you tried Amethyst? Do you think they're similar? Also, have you tried any of the flanker fragrances? Do you think that you have a favourite out of the three? I'd be really interested to know. And thank you so much for watching. And if you have enjoyed the video, then please press the like button. And please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.